Welcome to another edition of Fabric 5. Today we'll be talking about fabric business continuity related data. This is part two of the series. Today's coverage will be on disaster recovery. I recommend you go ahead and turn on your closed captioning in order to help you understand me better for the issues. So let's get started with this. Disaster recovery in Microsoft Fabric is not straightforward. The first thing to be aware of is that disaster recovery features are only for one lake data. If you look at the dialog on the screen, you will see that this only includes lake houses, data warehouses, notebooks, and Spark job definitions. If the data is not stored in one lake, it will not be able to be set up for disaster recovery within the capacity. This brings us to the second key point to understand. Disaster recovery is set at the capacity level for all data stored in one lake in that capacity. In order to set up disaster recovery for your capacity, you need to have access to the capacity settings in the admin portal. In the portal, select the capacity you want to turn this on for, and you will receive a dialog box to confirm that this is what you want to do. It also lets you know that it will incur additional costs when you turn this on. All one lake data in that capacity will be copied to the paired region based on the capacity you have selected. Replicated disaster recovery data storage will be charged at the BCDR storage cost, about 50% of your current storage costs in Fabric. Furthermore, you will be incurring additional costs for the right actions required to move your data to the other region. As you can see, this is not a complete solution. This is consistent with Microsoft's approach to disaster recovery, which is a shared responsibility model. Microsoft makes a number of features available to support disaster recovery, but does not complete the solution for you. It is very important that you have a plan to handle disaster recovery to meet the needs of your organization. As part of the planning, you need to be aware that the recovery operations are also not straightforward. When data gets rolled over to the disaster recovery target, data will be read-only, and much of the fabric functionality will not work. You have access to the data through APIs, but very limited services within the fabric ecosystem will be available to you. Be aware that Power BI supports read-only reporting as it does today. Do your best to understand these limitations so you can determine what needs to be available and how you will make it available to your users in case of a disaster. One other thing to be aware of before we go is that if you are working with a region that has availability zones, those zones are not replicated to the disaster sites. The disaster targeted area will use locally redundant storage at this time. While this should not be an issue, you should be aware that this is how it works today. Disaster recovery is really a hands-on solution that you need to be aware of. You need to plan and prepare to handle a disaster situation by understanding what Microsoft provides and what you need to build out to support it, if required. If you are required to test your DR solution, you may not be able to take advantage of the solution as it is managed by Microsoft on the back end. Be prepared, document your solution, and understand what it will take to recover your environment. I have shared links below related to these topics, including what is available with Fabric. In the next Fabric 5, I will discuss data reset options for your Fabric data. Like or subscribe if you enjoyed this session. Until next time, thank you for checking in.